Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll dive into Liu Moxing's DPS build for PvE. Liu Moxing has insane damage potential as he can continuously inflict multiple ticks of magic damage to all nearby enemies, which is essential for clearing instances. If you missed our previous discussion regarding Liu Moxing's skill mechanics and an analysis of his pros and cons, make sure to watch the video using the link below. This time, we'll cover everything you need to know from stats, runes, gears, cards, upgrades, and battle setup to guide you in optimizing your Liu Moxing's damage potential in PvE. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, for attribute point distribution, max out int to boost magic attack, which serves as a foundation for increasing magic damage. After that, max out luck since a total of 250 points of luck is required to increase the cooking success rate to 100%. In addition, if equipped with one of these items that grants spell crit chance, then every 6 luck would boost your spell crit damage by 1% or 1.1% if you have a Kamora card deposited in the handbook. Personally, I aim for around 40% spell crit chance for a good trade-off. As for the remaining attribute points, just allocate it on strength for boosting max HP and movement speed cap while cooking due to the mobile cooking passive skill. As for damage modifiers, these are the ones that can further boost Liu Maoxing's damage output against monsters. Liu Maoxing's kit already provides a high amount of magic attack, magic damage, and even skill damage depending on the rune you got. Hence, you can prioritize increasing M-Pen, Ignore M-Death, Spell Crit, and other magic damage modifiers. Take note that it's preferred to focus on increasing fire damage rather than water damage for several reasons. First, when dealing damage using Magical Panda Tofu, your water damage will be temporarily adjusted to equal your fire damage. Second, the food left on the ground after cooking is successful, inflicts fire damage. Third, the Acer Monument grants 15% fire damage but only 10% water damage. And fourth, there are more sources of fire damage in the Adventure Handbook so it will be inherently higher than water damage. Up next, let's take a look at Liu Moxing's runes. Maxing out the core passive skill to level 7 should be your topmost priority as it makes his cooking process uninterruptible and his friend Lan Fei will appear to assist in cooking an identical dish. This equivalent to releasing the same skill twice, boosting his buff's effects and doubles his damage in PvE. Aside from activating the second line effect of his runes, you should also focus on getting a high first line value on these two essential runes. First is a star rune for Magical Panda Tofu, which directly boosts its damage by up to 50%, and the other one is the S rune for Treasure Mountain Hot Pot, which grants himself 1% to 10% skill damage bonus per stack, granting a total of 50% skill damage at full stacks. It's of lower priority to aim for a high first line value on his other 4 runes, as they do not affect his damage dealing capability. For attribute runes, prioritize leveling up the following for improving damage. As for the Arcane Rune, I recommend getting White Blade Rune for boosting your final damage when there is only one enemy within 5 meters, War Preparedness Rune for extra shield, and Spirit Rune to prevent running out of SP during long fights. Up next is type into the recommended equipment set and cards. First for weapon, Liu Moxing's exclusive weapon Chef Certification would be the best in slot as it directly boosts the damage of Magical Panda Tofu as well as magic damage modifiers. In addition, its tier 5 effect improves both his offensive and defensive capabilities. Your weapon should be enchanted with Int and Luck and inlaid with any of the following cards. Personally, I prefer combining one spell crit card like Kamara card or Shelter Pet Star card with one damage increasing card like Channeler card or Alien Fire Lord Kaho card. For offhand, just choose any of these three options as the main equipment depending on the stat you're lacking. Wisdom Totem for boosting magic damage, Other Shore Web for boosting magic attack and M Pen, or Devil Skull for boosting Ignore M Death. As for Phantom offhand, you may either use a Peak Platter for increasing damage and reducing cast time, or a Creeper Agreement if lacking Ignore M Death. Your offhand should be enchanted with Insight 4 and inlaid with any of the following cards. For armor, the two options for main equipment are Dream Eater's Disguise for increasing Ignore M Death and Fire Damage or Wisdom Sacrificial Garb for increasing Magic Damage and Fire Damage. As for Phantom Armor, the only option is a Star Shatter Scout for additional Magic Damage modifiers. Your armor should be enchanted with Int and Luck and inlaid with any of the following cards. For Garma, the universal choice for magic skill damage dealers is Classic Robe with 12% skill damage as main equipment and Divine Feather Clothes as phantom equipment. Your garment should be enchanted with Arcane 4 
and inlaid with any of the following cards. For footgeared options for main equipment are orderly ankle boots with 6% M-Pen or glorious war boots with 6% magic damage. As for phantom equipment, you may either use the white gem boots or St. Mary's cloth shoes. Your footgear should be enchanted with Arcane 4 and inlaid with either Swordsman Senya MVP card for improving damage or Malefire Star card to be able to move more freely while cooking. For accessories, the peasant slot or Essence of Scorching Flame with 12% fire damage as main equipment and Flame Feather as phantom equipment. All accessories should be enchanted with Anti-Mage 4 and inlaid with Devil Governor card for increasing skill damage and final damage and Wish of Calamity card for additional luck and spell crit chance. For headwear, these are my top picks for each slot, just choose depending on availability and the side you're lacking. As for headwear enchantment, aim for a keen fort enchant on your tail item and inside fort enchant on your face and back items. As for headwear card, you may use any of the following for enhancing damage. Up next, here are the other upgrades that you can invest in to further boost your damage. For Acer Monument, activating all the nodes will grant the following stats. Notably, it provides 15% fire damage, 10% water damage, 11% magic damage and magic attack, and 10% M-Pen and ignore m -Def. For Guild Buffs, maxing out your blessings and prayers will grant additional raw magic attack, ignore m def M-Pen, and fire damage. For Oracle Mirror Extract, the options are Blue Glossarm for damage to MVP, Stick of Wicked Thought for M-Pen, Residue Staff for ignore m def Oath Book Page 2 for Magic Attack, or Fire Axe for Fire Damage. For Ancient Relics, you may focus on increasing damage using Lord of Vain or Era Fire Seed. You may also opt to improve survivability using Horn of Den Yielding. For Equipment Memory, here are the attributes that you should prioritize for boosting damage. When it comes to the third selectable entry, choose the first option if your focus is solely on PvE. However, if you want more versatile stats that will benefit both PvE and PvP, consider selecting either the second or third options. For multi job, you can unlock the following classes to get more int, luck, and strength. And for Adventure Handbook, just focus on collecting items and achievements that grant magic attack when unlocked or deposited. Finally, let's take a look at some tips for using Lumo Xing in battle. First, place the following skills on the manual and auto skill bars. I prefer placing Magical Panda Tofu and Mountain Treasures Hot Pot on auto. Once you're all set, use the following consumables that can boost your damage, such as Meal Bees, Food Buffs, and Fire Alloy. Due to the Super Chef passive skill, Lumo Xing will gain 60% magic attack as long as he has 6 stacks of Food Buffs. Before initiating combat, cook first Mountain Treasure's Hot Pot to boost your magic damage and skill damage. Nearby enemies will also gain increased physical and magic damage. Then cook Comet Fright Rays to get a damage absorbing shield for survivability. After that, you can start engaging the boss and turn on auto battle to cook Magical Panda Tofu. Make sure that you are within 5 meters of the boss for all damage ticks to hit the boss. You may also restore the HP and SP of you and your teammates by cooking Sea Brim Continental Seal. If anticipating damage, just cook Crystal Phoenix to prevent you and your team from dying. Yumo Xing is really a tank while in cooking process, so you can fully support your team while wearing magic DPS gears. And there you have it, my Liu Maoxing DPS guide for PvE. Overall, this new collab hero class can be a valuable asset in the team due to his ability to provide crucial buffs that can keep himself and his teammates alive while being able to dish out insane amounts of damage. How about you guys? Will you be building Liu Maoxing as a DPS in the future? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.